Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Bailey now. Each year a new intake of army recruits arrive to complete their basic training. They have just 16 weeks to prove they have what it takes. They'll be pushed to the limit as they transition from civilian to soldier. Kill the enemy! And not everyone will make it. Day one and the staff of the Army Depot await the arrival of 107 recruits from across New Zealand. The recruits are aged from 17 to 39, with 19 women and 88 men. As soon as they get off the bus, everything here at the Army Depot is done with a sense of urgency. It suddenly sinks in what they've got themselves into. They'll be feeling the pressure, they'll be questioning, have they made the right decision? Through that side door. But a lot of them are just out of school. You know, this time a month ago, they were at school, and here they are in a military base learning how to be soldiers. All right, team, come in this way, follow me. Form up. That's right, shoulder to shoulder. Did you have a point to raise? No, I thought the name was cool. No. OK, first and foremost, welcome to Hawaii Military Camp. OK, you're about to become a member of the New Zealand Defence Force, and as such, will be subjected to the Armed Force Discipline Act. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Recruits and staff are not to accept each other as virtual friends or friends or bloody Facebook or Snapchat or whatever the hell you guys do now. Yeah. Don't get caught or well, don't even think about it. We're clear on that? Yes, yes, sir. We don't actually own you yet, okay? Until Thursday, till you sign that dotted line. Recruit Chanel Watton is just 17 years old. It's her first time living away from home and her family has high expectations. My dad was quite upset when I left because I'm the youngest in the family. So me leaving the household is quite difficult for them to lose their last child. <laughs> My great grandfather won a VC, so it's quite recognised in our family that the army is quite high up and serious. And so my nana is quite proud of me for coming here. And all my family is like, yeah, taking after our family history. So it's quite exciting. Like I have something to push for, but. It's also quite intimidating. <laughs> Grab your PT kit or your equivalent, shorts, t-shirt, running shoes. Go in there, get changed, and come back out here for your test. Okay, let's go, let's say, let's boys move with a sense of urgency. So every time you get something, just move at double top speed. So when we get back to our barracks today, we're gonna have to move really quick time, quick as we can. Let's go. For 19-year-old Tewehi Tafaiti, being accepted into the New Zealand Army was something he'd always dreamed of. Oh, I felt like I had achieved something, like huge. This is uh, the biggest thing of my life so far. Me. Yeah. Um, first person in my family to go to the army, so it was a big like, step for me. When I was getting on the bus, uh, Nan cried. They don't want me to get on, but yeah, she told me, you're not going to um, war. <laughs> so I kind of have to. Nan's louder than anyone here, but scary to some people. And I love her for that, you know, she taught me well. Three, two, one, one. For the next 16 weeks, each recruit will be subject to a barrage of tests. First up is a drug test conducted by the military police. If they fail, they are straight back on the bus home. Uh, testing for uh, six substances, amphetamine, um, MOP, uh, benzodiazepines, or benzodiazepines, uh, methamphetamine, coconoids, and uh, THC, cannabis. That's a pass. We're gonna tip it. Were you on it? I was like, it was a bit hard trying to um, try and shake it out of you. <laughs> no illicit drugs, but Wellington in the club could be a bit like, I just want to smoke weed or something in the club, so maybe you might have inhaled it. And do you own a razor? Make sure you use it. 
Gay people have stubble on their face are hipsters and lazy people. I don't want to know your first name. We're not BBFs, we're not best friends forever. What's your surname? What's your family name? Lou. Lou. Right, Lou. Yep. Stop, yep. It's yes, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. Don't look at me. So we all come from different backgrounds. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. Yes, corporal. Corporal. So in this organisation, we need to work together, right, and work and make sure that we work and sing off the same page. And that's why we use drill. The 107 recruits are now part of Casino Company and are separated into platoons called Hinton, Narimu and Elliot. Each recruit is assigned a room with seven others for the duration of their basic training. Dancia, Fisher, Dawa, Korifa, Crozier, Moore, Fenner and Sanson. When an NCO or two commander says Kauru, so you drop what you're doing, runs out of Kauru. So it's got to be louder than that, eh? So Kauru. Good. That's the standard, or louder. So Every platoon has their own corporals, a second lieutenant and a sergeant, who all bring their own unique style with them. See, for you don't know me, I'm Sergeant Penny. I've been about myself being in the armed forces for about coming on 12 years. I joined up as a bullback 19-year-old, standing where you are in September 2006. There's three things that I really do not like is lying, uh, thieves, yeah, just because I'm black doesn't mean I am one. And the last one is bullying. Sweet, I don't like bullies. If you want to be one, by all means, come into my office and we'll have a talk about it. A friendly chat. Friendly chat. With you on the floor, probably. <laughs> Jokes, I wouldn't do that to you with the cameras on. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five grey blankets, two sheets, pillowcase pillow, and a counterpane. So make sure it's down the centre of the bed. Questions? For 19-year-old Hannah Wainahu, joining the army has taken her away from the harsh realities of being unemployed. On the benefit, I had a specific amount of money and um, I didn't want to go to my mother to ask for money because, you know, I'm an independent woman. Um, yeah, and with that small amount of money, I had to sacrifice, you know, a small portion for food, a small portion for rent. Yeah, it was pretty hard. Mum cried when I left under her shades. I knew she'll be proud of me, but yeah, she, yeah, she's my heart. Oh, yeah. Not too bad, ladies, so far. Keep it up. Because you'll be having a feed of this for like six more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this is all. It is, and that's why you're making one each. And also, you have to sleep in both sheets. Yeah, there's a sheet and a sheet. You sleep in between the two. Uh, if you choose not to and you're feeling a bit itchy, well, sad one. Cry me a river. Uh, if you do feel a bit sick in the morning, yeah, we have a thing called um, a sick parade, and that's where we take you sick people, and we take you to the doctor, yeah, talk about your hurt feelings, and then we'll come back and we'll sort it out from there. Yeah, you probably get a panada or a hardened up pill. It's like that concrete one, eh? Is it concrete? Yeah, concrete one, concrete pill. Thank you. It's been a very long day. Yeah. Looking forward to having a sleep. Not looking forward to waking up at 6 a.m. I suppose that's what we signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> the horriest bed and sheets I've ever seen. <laughs> See you in the morning. It's putting the future soldiers to bed. It's 6.30 in the cold or don't be late. We're really, let's get up. So then we're obviously very a bit shocked. Um, coming into the army environment or the barrack environment. Yeah, so we've, we've taught them just for the morning and night routine, but now they've got to do it. But they'd uh, either let mum do it or just uh, just put the blankets straight, out, oh, straight, straight on top of it, just to hide the sheets. 20 minutes, men. Put the conditioner on the floor, look down the conditioner's gone, it's un in the drain, and I can't find it. <laughs> While Elliot struggled to wake, Hinton Platoon, who share the same barracks, are already lined up and ready to leave for breakfast. A 
As the first two platoons arrive at the mess, Elliot are still conducting a bed inspection. So we've got this one over here. It's a bit of a train smash. So basically we're waiting for Sergeant Penny House platoon just there. Our timing at the moment was 6.30. We're currently 06.45 at the moment. Sergeant Penny has never been one for timings, um, as you can tell. Māori fella, quite dark complexion, and uh, doesn't really like to stick to his timings. Obviously, the two other platoons are here, and uh, we do maintain to the rules, the timings, HR. HR being go time. If you're not there, ready for HR, you're in trouble. Sergeant Penny here. Finally, Penny Ha's platoon arrives, and everyone can eat. I don't know how everyone else is getting cereal. This is like for me. Uh, I got some scrambled eggs, baked beans, bacon, and mushroom. Throughout the 16 weeks, physical fitness is a core element of basic training. If a recruit doesn't pass a series of tests, they won't be able to graduate. Push, push, you got this, push, push, push. Let's go, mister, get up there. That's the one. Two, three. 78. Oh. 79. Continuous motion, your last one. Lock up, lock up. At the tip right here, just talking to him. 79, man, standard. If, if he's in the military with us, then you don't see many guys getting over 60, 70 and stuff. And Duffy, 47. 47, good. Thank you. Let's go. Talia Duffy is originally from Australia. At 23 years old, she is older than most female recruits, and she has a romantic connection to the army. Um, my partner's in the army, um, so she gave me a lot of tips for joining and stuff, so she didn't want me to join. <laughs> she, um, She's very protective, I guess. She's like, she didn't want me to go through what she went through, but I'm uh, still very supportive at the same time. At the moment, I'll show you Leaving, that was emotional. Um, with my partner, she didn't really like to touch me or anything because she was going to cry, and then I would have cried. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, it was just... Fuck. It was just real emotional. It's hard, hard to say goodbye. You gotta do it, get it done. And then yeah. Remember team, make some more effort. Stand by. Three, two, one, go. As part of their basic training, all recruits have to complete a 2.4 kilometer run. Male recruits have to do this in under 10 minutes 30, and the women, 12 minutes 20. 1001, 10.04, 10.05, 10.07. Oh, it's been 40, which is a minute slower than my last time. I think I ate too much breakfast. Why not? 11.52. Despite being supported by the staff, recruit Duffy has failed the run. So I really struggle with running. So my main goal was just to keep trying and to not stop and to show the instructors that I wouldn't stop. Uh, I, I'm definitely one of the least fit ones, especially in my platoon. But can only go up from here. The army has identified four distinct emotional phases the recruits will have to go through during their first month of basic training. Forming, storming, norming and performing. So right now we're still on the forming stage, really. So we're still getting together as a team, finding out what everyone's strengths and weaknesses are. Right, ta! After the forming comes the storming. About the second or third week is when a lot of arguments start happening, a lot of personality clashes and whatnot. People are starting to get really tired. And then after that, they start performing. Sizing them up for their shirts and their trousers and their jackets. And then we get the length of their trousers. It's my fault if they get it wrong. But they do lose weight, and that's not my fault. The, the kapu I'm giving you is in um, combat jacket, fleece. Those fellas down there will say, 
Smock blame there? Yeah, no, they knew secretly. When we see the new recruits come in, literally half of them are scared. And part of our job is to uffy them as well, you know, just to try and say to them, hey, this is just the process, enjoy it while you're in here. When I first came here, uh, pretty nervous, um, didn't know what to expect. Uh, it was pretty intimidating, but once you get into it, hour by hour, it was getting easier and easier. Look how much they're worth. They're like, they have like 50 bucks, pretty much. We had a really big head. I know, I'm the bum. We're just waiting for our undies now. No, okay. Met heaps of new brothers, heaps of new friends. Mm -hmm. Gonna be together for the next 16 weeks. Possibly friends for life, you know. Once the uniform goes on, there's a huge sense of pride. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, 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 not bad. Three days of basic training has given the recruits a taste of army life. Not too bad, team, not too bad. Not too bad for two hours of the drill. But before they sign on the dotted line, they have to consider what it means to leave behind the freedom of civilian life. You're not an individual. Look at the people next to you. Look them, look them in the eyes. Yeah, these are now your comrades. And your personal comfort and needs from this moment on, on this course, become subservient to that person next to you. Um, we're trying to take a civilian just out of school and we're trying to turn them into soldiers to go on operations in some dangerous places around the world. So there's no beating around the bush when it comes to meeting the standard that we want. So right now you have that decision to change your lives forever and to really install the Ngāti Tuma Tawinga and that warrior ethos that we strive in the New Zealand Defence Force. Enjoy it, because it's a fucking trip of a lifetime. If it doesn't have water, it's not gonna do anything, yeah? Steam, oh. Steam is what makes the ironing work. It's day three and the recruits are still settling into the barracks, learning the basic skills of life they may have missed growing up. Why isn't it doing those steams? <laughs> I paid $129 for this. <laughs> no steam coming up. Many have sacrificed a lot to be here. As one of the fittest, it wasn't the physical side recruit to fight he struggled with. Trying to scrape up some money to make enough to get what was on my gear list. Had to even ask off Nan, and she's struggling as well, so I made it here. Happy for that. What do you want? <laughs> we only have one at home, so I had to go to the second hand store. I wonder why it was 250. <laughs> Each recruit is allowed to bring one photo with them. So that's a photo of my um, my sister and I. Uh, she passed away at 16 years old. I was only seven at that time. She she's a, a, a paraplegic. She is really bossy. She wouldn't kick my ass. If she had le uh, legs that would work, she'll kick my ass. It's a huge honour, all right? Yeah, carrying the mana, carrying the mana of my whanau. That's it. Recruit Kiriana has brought along his girlfriend. Yeah, I miss her. I don't think I miss her as much as she misses me, is because like we're doing so much throughout the day from six till ten o'clock that this isn't really much room to think. Um, you're sort of not thinking and just just doing what the instructors tell you to do. I stop checking out my missus. <laughs> Recruits are not just tested physically. Throughout the 16 weeks, they'll be put through a number of stressful situations to see how they'll react in battle and under fire. See those three words on the wall? Are you going to be fit to fight? Is anybody scared of this stuff? Sweet. It's OK to be afraid. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. What scared does is it raises all your sensory makes you stay alert and focused. Keep going, of course, cuz. We're going almost to the middle. Do it there, just do it there. I don't want to do it. You can. You keep your feet on the log. <laughs> <laughs> My hair was actually like that. Thank God. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. 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 I just love the kind of that click that we have. Some of us all just get each other. 
Yeah, it's cool. Like we can joke around, um, but we know when to be serious. It's the night before the recruits attest and officially join the army. They're allowed to use their phones for the first time. It's a final chance to talk to family and friends before deciding whether or not they want to stay. We're, we're attesting tomorrow, so I think that means we're pretty much signing our lives away to the Queen, so... Well, oh, of course, we haven't signed the, signed the thing yet, our uh, name in the bottom line. It's better writing letters so I can stay calm. Yeah, I, I look at everyone and they're calling their parents, but, yeah, i just got to stay strong. I was so lonely. I legit don't have a phone because I, I lost my phone the Friday at a party before I came. I guess it's karma for partying before I came. Hi. I'm reading the Bible. Right but not all the recruits are coping. Some are having last-minute doubts. Oh, some of the girls were just saying stuff to me. <laughs> I was freaking out. Because <laughs> I'm quite, like, I'm small blonde girl, can't really stick up for myself as much, because I'm little and they're all big and tall and strong. And it is quite difficult. Like, I know I have the support, but having like my actual mum there would be quite different. And that phone call can be enough to often uh, say, no, I don't want to do this anymore. And it can really trigger that, that want, that real want to go home. Lots of people have said I won't be able to do it. So I'm trying to prove everyone that I can do it and I'm strong enough and have enough in me to get through it. Mum gave me no option. I rung her and she said, no, you got no option. You either test or you like, there's, there's pretty much no other option. <laughs> what are you, Tana? Watson? The last I think it's only fair they get a chance to talk to their family and friends and before they really make that decision. And once they sign tomorrow, uh, they sit there and have a test to the Queen. So they're now soldiers. Anyone found hiding electronics in your room will be charged. As day breaks, the recruits march as one to the Wairu Army Museum to attest to Queen and country. They all pledge to give their utmost, blood, sweat and tears to their new family as soldiers of the New Zealand Army. If anyone has any lingering doubts, this is their last moment to pull out. So behind you, you'll see a green stone wall as referred to as Roi Mata Ponamu. The water flowing down represents the families of those who have gone before and the tears they shared when their loved ones departed for the service in faraway lands. As Wainahu attests, the significance of what she is signing up for hits her. It was very emotional for me, putting my hand up and saying, I am here from Ngāruru Kitai Ngātikau signing off my life on behalf of my whanau. Signing the dotted line, um, that's like, it's pretty huge. Well, that's, that's pretty much like the first step for me, I guess. Like, I'm proud as hell, like, you know, this is big for anyone, like, not even someone just of my age. When you come here, there's a lot of mana from everyone. Been here for nearly a whole week now. And we've learnt a lot more than what I did last year at school, I guess. Holy, this is, a, this is actually happening. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. After a testing, the recruits are welcomed onto the army's marae, named after the Maori god of war, Ngāti Tu Matawenga. I kind of have a mindset like the olden days, you know how one person or two family members went off to war on behalf of their family? I don't want my family to go, I'll go. Ta 
welcome to the family of Ngāti Tūmatōin. Regardless of your race or religion, Ngāti Tūmatōin is your tribe and this marae is your home. Get to know us. Get to know your tribe. Ki ana te kore, o tahi te koha o te ngira, e kuhnatu ai te miro ma, te miro fero, me te miro pango. I te rangi nei o tui a tahi te arata ki a kotahi. Coming up next week. We're pushed to our limits, but you can't complain about it because you get pulled out of basic training. Boys, guys, he's turning into soldier team.